first of all, Tamaki College, we serve a Desao 1A community. Uh, we 72% Pacifica, we have 27% Maori students and 1% uh, uh, Pakia and a few other uh, groups as well. So that's just our demographics. Take you back maybe five or ten years. Um, some of the jobs that people are doing now did not exist. Um, some of my students, this was two years back, sir I've written a software and that will do this. Um, the students who are in the in other classes writing apps already. That job didn't exist um, maybe even five years back. Through the Manai Kalani Trust the students now have their own device. Uh, they pay $3.50 a week and it's a lease to own scheme and um, we have found that in some family situations that's been the uh, first time they've actually had such a device in their homes and that's been really good to see how not only do they maintain those payments but how proud they are that it's not just a handout but it's in fact a hand up. What we've noticed is that a lot of the kids now have come here as digital natives and so uh, the college has had to uh, get our staff on board and make sure they too are digital natives so that we can continue to build on the skills that these students have picked up in the primary school and of course help them uh, better access information, uh, better access their learning so that uh, we can begin to improve the academic outcomes for our students. I was afraid that the students would have more digital knowledge than I would and that I would go in and they would know more than I would and I wouldn't be able to teach them effectively because they would already be ahead of me. But um, it kind of turned out that even though my skills were in need of upgrade and the training was useful, students, they're digital natives in some aspects of technology like apps and games or maybe teaching themselves skills off YouTube or something like that but perhaps not not as native in the kind of educational use of technology. The first thing was is that I'm not really technology savvy. Um, I didn't even have a cell phone at the time and I didn't have a Facebook account. And um, I didn't even understand what a URL address was or what the cloud is. And um, so it was quite a big step for me to actually make that leap and things. And um, even just, uh, even though I find it easy now, actually making a website and getting to terms all the lingo that you need to be IT savvy was initially very difficult for me. None of the language made sense to me. Google Docs, I thought was Google Dots up in the cloud and I'm picturing dots up in the cloud. Everything went over my head. And I was hard work. The teachers who were working with me, I was very hard work because they would sit with me and instruct me and I'd write down notes and I'd try it on my own and sometimes it just wouldn't work. No, I don't think I was prepared, but I think being here in this environment surrounded by everyone is in the same boat. Um, it's a very much a community of learning from each other and helping each other figure this stuff out. I felt as if students weren't going to need me and it saddened me a bit. My major apprehension probably was that I knew it was going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time and if we were going to do it well then the school had to pretty much 100% commit to it and it had to be the thing. Of course once I got into it there was no going back. I guess I just could see the advantages and sort of could see being left behind if I didn't sort of start taking it on. And so, and so I actually um, made it a real goal of mine and put every, a lot of other things to one side to actually learn it. Everyone knew it was coming, so you had a year to prepare. And the big thing that I think made a difference for us is we had at least one PD a day every term in the year before in our departments where it was pretty much 100% committed to resource creation. We did not have a stable internet connection. And so the program was delayed by about six months. I think about July we ended up starting it. That was one sort of hiccup. And then we had small apprehensions about how are we going to cope with um, students getting tempted to go online and play games. There were still massive frustrations when we started around speed and things like that. I think if you do start doing it, you have to figure out what's the positive thing of going to it and you have to keep that clearly in mind and in your vision as the internet is slow, as kids can't log on, as they're having problems with password words, you need to constantly remind yourself, but in the long run it's going to pay off because. The biggest support was just having people within the school that I could go into when something was on my mind. I could just pop in and get sort of help straight away. We had two teachers who, were, who had part-time loads teaching 
and the other half of their load was supporting us who were so needy. And sometimes in the middle of a non-contact, I would just send out an email to both teachers, damsel in distress, and they would both come running up to help me. These are students from the digital age. They are born with this, so be ready to learn from them. And that actually helps build a rapport with them as well. In the first year that we introduced this, quite often I had to call on a student to help me. How do I share a document? How do I? And because they were so willing to share, there was this partnership. I help you when I can and you help me when you can. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Like, if we know a bit more than you, don't be afraid to ask. Just because we ask you for like, if we're a mess and we're asking you equations and you're giving the answer, or if you don't know anything about technology, we, we can tell you. I saw um, how Google Docs could work and how um, you could have access to students' work through the URL address. Um, and then also the websites is a um, way of um, storing students' work and also um, putting your notes on, onto the website as opposed to the students having to copy things down. I just saw it as being a much more efficient way of um, doing things. Even though it's one-to-one, -one, students still want that relationship with their teachers. And so we have the face-to-face, -face, we have the digital, we have the collaboration, lots of things happening in one place but it's good to know my students still need me. I started to um, change my assessments, change my learning and, and do a lot more written tasks using Google Docs um, because I just found that um, uh, teacher feedback is so important, and feedback and feed forward. And with Google Docs you can um, comment on students' work so easily and the students can get into a dialogue with you about what they're doing. Using Netbook helps me with my learning because um, I can interact with the teacher online without him having to, to go around the whole class waiting for everyone to finish and then individually going around to check students. He can just check it online straight away and, and leave comments for us. There was one particular student who would not write anything, not even his name on the top of a piece of paper. And we were just waiting for netbooks to arrive. And as soon as we got it, he was interested. He was YouTubing v videos of tsunamis and he was just so much more engaged. The students are now learning skills, not only in your subject content, but also technology um, content as well. So the learning skills of, um, of word processing, I guess, and also uh, making movies and um, making websites and um, just being able to um, navigate their way around the internet. Our school is more productive now. You know, um, schoolwork does get um, finished on time when it needs to be. Um, we take more responsibility for our learning, so you know, more of the self-management thing. For the first time I've seen students doing work at home, and actually students are doing more work at home sometimes. Sometimes actually sitting in class, there's more distractions in class because there's other students around. Engagement through the roof. Because everything on our sites, we've tried to keep it as interactive as possible. What we found is that uh, not only are the number of kids passing going up, the quality of the results are also something that's very pleasing to us now. The students that were getting achieves before are now getting merit and excellences. And um, although there are still students who are not achieving and who aren't engaged, I think the students that were engaged before, their, their improvement is quite dramatic and we're getting a lot of excellence um, grades and excellence endorsements because we can take them to the next level with um, all the feedback that we can give them. For example, our Maori students, in 2012 the pass rate was 5.7% and now those, uh, that, as we've uh, been four years in this, it's 49.5%. Uh, the power of the hyperlink. The hyperlink solves so many things. And students are so used to hyperlinking two things when they see it, right, hyperlink, so that will give them more information, etc. But they can also do it when they're submitting work back to you. So when they're submitting work back to you for evidence, they're more than familiar with, if it's in a Google Doc, a slide, a, a Google site, what have you, using hyperlinks to make the initial information really simple to follow and then hyperlink off to whatever they need to provide evidence for. Talking about the hyperlinks, then that can also be used when information is submitted to NZQA for moderation. Our entire NCA Level 1 program is digital. We've just sent our stuff to the moderators and it was just a click of a button sharing. So it was much, much easier. My thinking is that if the learning is ubiquitous, the assessment should be ubiquitous as well. And using the technology, for example, uh, Google Apps for Education, 
we could actually track a student's learning and progress. And we should be able to reach a point where we could be able to assess them ongoing so that we have a more accurate picture of what the student's abilities are. This opportunity for amazing variety is all this different stuff we can do and hopefully out of that will come greater achievement. I'm constantly thinking, okay, well how can I use this to accelerate learning and to individualise learning, you know, and you know, use it for that purpose, not just to use it because it's a digital thing. We've got to make sure that any resource on there gives them a score, gives them instant feedback, allows them to compete with each other, and through play they're doing so much learning. I'm starting to look into kind of MOOC style courses where I'm doing lots of screencasts. I'm using video editing now, I'm using YouTube, um, I'm using video analysis tools, and I'm actually buying programs and buying apps that the students can access and actually um, take it beyond just word processing. We've also been working together on Google Plus communities to help us with that because in graphics they're really good at drawing, they're really good at making and when they fall on their face it's when they have to analyse their work and so we've been using Google Plus communities all together, we've been putting all of our work all up there and we've been analysing each other's work. We've gone to an hour and 40 minute periods for um, classes, which makes a big difference. Because if you have any sort of technical issue about logging in or password, that can take half an hour. And if you're only on a 50 minute lesson, then the time's gone. The activities are designed so that they can work autonomously if they want to. They don't need me to lecture them. Sometimes we'll have very small little snippets of me talking to them, and the rest of the time I'm moving around the room, checking up, seeing how they're going, giving them help talking in small groups or in one-to-one -one, and I find that so much more effective. At some point we're going to get to a point where a student comes in and sits down and works on whichever subject they want They want to. So they've got five subjects. If an assessment's due tomorrow in bio and I'm in English, they'll be doing it in English. And we, we've started that teachers make, for want of a better term, packs with other teachers and go, well, when's your history due? You've got a lot of history students in my English class. I'm okay if you work on your history, da, 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 da. when you finish that, work on your English during history time. But eventually, especially with senior students, we're going to get to the point where they could, maybe even just the second half of the term, they could be in any class in the school working on any subject. And that's a massive mind shift for teachers. The exciting thing about it, there is no destination. So whatever you master today, there's always something new that's coming out. And as teachers, we have to be on our toes. If we are using outdated resources and contexts, we're losing our students. In some ways it's harder, but I think it's more effective. I think out there in the real, real world, that's where things are going. If they're going to be geographers, they're going to be working digitally. Wouldn't go back to traditional teaching. It would be like handcuffing my hands behind my back. I wouldn't be able to do much. And so, because I can see the excitement and enthusiasm from the students, I've got no option but to meet their needs. I think you build a better bond, you get to know who they are when you get to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with them or in small groups. And um, it just makes it far more interesting for me actually. Technology is our future and us kids are the future. So yeah, keeping up with um, technology is helping us. But we don't know what to expect in another five years time. So we really can't um, take a risk, um, especially as secondary students. This is a high stakes environment for them in terms of their career planning and preparation. Just because something gets results doesn't mean it's the right way of doing things. There are many places, many schools around the country where sitting the learners down with a pen and a book and getting them to copy stuff will work. It will get them results, but that doesn't mean we should do it that way. And so I think I, my advice would be to be open and to challenge yourself about what is the potential for this learning. What could we do with this? Teachers have a lot of knowledge and all we need to do now is channel it in a different medium. My advice is to um, principals and senior leaders and management is that I think if you do it, you've got to do it. You've got to be all in. That's the first thing. Is you, if you do it, just do it by halves well then you won't get the results. Um, you will see the bad things and you won't see the good things. Don't panic. No. And don't try and think too far ahead. Don't think, how am I going to um, approach this whole course for the whole year and deliver it to the students? We approach this by maybe be keeping two weeks ahead. 
getting it on on the class site and then I was maybe um, a couple of months ahead and maybe I got like the next term ahead and um, don't try and do too much all at once because your brains will start leaking out your ears. Keeping as much as possible online and interactive. The worst thing any teacher can do is take a worksheet, upload it, because it's like a dead resource. Students aren't interested. So I would suggest find a buddy, keep it online, keep it interactive. For education to be effective in the future, we need people to be open to that change, to be adaptive. You know, try it first, you know, before you actually just, you know, make all your assumptions about it. My advice to teachers would be to accept that this is where this generation is heading and the best thing to do is just to accept it and teach us how to deal with it. Practice using the tools before you give them to students so that you can guide them with the usage of the tool as well as the content and check that it matches. But if teachers are feeling that they um, haven't got the skills to use a technology, it doesn't actually take that much to learn. Using Google Docs, which is probably the best tool, I think, to um, engage students, is um, actually a very easy process, really. Ask for help. There'll be someone in your school who's slightly less scared than you that might be willing to offer information. And also, if you've got a really good relationship with your students, you can ask them for help, because they've, they've probably done some things before, and they would, they would probably quite enjoy sharing that knowledge with you.